The second day of fall, bringing warm temperatures, gusty winds, and threat of power outages. What to expect here at home as fire weather blows into Southern California. Flipping a dangerous and deadly trend on PCH, the new sheriff's report that's bringing hopeful news to drivers on the highway. And it's not graduation season, but traffic may seem like it. The event that's bringing crowds to Pepperdine. News at five starts now. News, weather, and sports. Live from Malibu, this is Newswave 32. High temperatures and the potential for high fire danger as SoCal experiences the first Santa Ana wind event of the season. Good evening, I'm Katie Mutchler. And I'm Christina Stratton. Welcome to the Tuesday night edition of News Waves. Many areas are under a heat advisory for three more hours as SoCal Edison continues to monitor the weather for fire danger. Meg joins us early with details on this early fall heat spell. Meg? Goodbye summer, hello Santa Ana winds. As we enter the first week of fall, we also enter the first Santa Ana wind event of the 2019-2020 wildfire season. Winds are gusting into LA and Ventura County with projected wind speeds between 10 and 45 miles per hour. High winds combined with high temperatures and low humidity bring the potential for critical fire conditions. The National Weather Service says the strongest winds are expected tonight. Thankfully, the winds and temperatures are lowest here in the coastal areas. I'll be back in a few minutes with your full forecast that involves a big change. Until, until then, I'll send it back inside. As dry and gusty winds blow through Southern California, SoCal Edison is determining, is determining whether to shut off power for 90,000 residents to prevent wildfires. Newswaves 32 has confirmed that power in Malibu will stay on. SoCal Edison is not concerned the winds will pose any major threat to Malibu. There is a planned outage for residents east of Los Flores Canyon Road starting tonight at 8 p.m. that is not related to the winds, but is for SoCal Edison to conduct maintenance. Santa Ana winds make it tough, but city officials in Malibu think they know where the next big fire will hit. News reporter 32, uh, Kaylin Mendez, joins us live with the details on the fire risk this season. Kaylin? Can get, especially Santa Ana wind season has kicked off, meaning there's a higher chance for fire danger. I'm here in eastern Malibu where city officials predict that the next fire will occur. Because we know it's not if a fire is going to come, but it's when a fire is going to come. Fire season is here. A meeting was held on Saturday to update the community on fire risks and wildlife conditions to better prepare for future fires. The city of Malibu has conducted drills recently simulating potential fire risks in eastern Malibu. The focus of that drill was to look at eastern Malibu because we know that's where the next big fire is going to be. Although officials are preparing for a large fire there, it could be anywhere. Our wild card always is going to be the San Ana winds. Last year, many houses caught fire due to flying embers, but under low wind conditions, brush fires should be easier to handle. The Sweetwater Canyon fire was an example of this. I burned up the hill through the aggressive firefighting efforts and the retardant drops and everything got to the top of the hill and it went out. Kind of a textbook scenario, so that was really good. With Santa Ana wind season approaching, risks for red flag warnings go up. They look at these indicators, the temperatures, they look at the wind speed, they look at relative humidity, um, they have a dead fuel moisture and then the live fuel moisture comes in. Vandermeulen says these conditions put us at a good level for not experiencing fires. Still, city leaders at the meeting addressed concern of residents who plan on staying during the next big fire. Know your role. Not everyone can or should stay at all. In regards to fire preparedness, Mayor Pro Tem Pearson strongly emphasizes having a plan ready. I call it the 5, 10, 30 minute plan. I, I, I it's like, it's fine, you got five minutes. You come home, what can you grab in five minutes? What can you grab in 10? Double the time, still not much time. But public safety manager Susan Duena says they're in danger in waiting too long to get out. They think that they, they can stick it out, they think it's gonna be okay, and then everyone kind of reaches that same, oh, 
blank <laughs> moment, and then they leave at once. City officials are also looking into options such as prescribed burns and trimmings of dry brush to help reduce the impact that potential fires may have. Live in eastern Malibu, Kayla Mendez for Newswaves 32. Thanks, Kaylin. Malibu is helping seniors prepare for future disasters. The city is offering a class for older adults and for people with disabilities to know what to do during fires, earthquakes, and other natural disasters. The class is Thursday at 3 p.m. at Malibu City Hall. This is one of the city's last programs this month for National Preparedness Month. People who sign up and are 55 or older will receive a free emergency preparedness kit. While it has been nearly a year since the Woolsey fire, the effects are being felt in Malibu schools. Since last year, Malibu's school population has dropped 10%. While decreased enrollment has been an ongoing trend, the SMMUSD says the trend has been made worse by the Woolsey fire. Many residents were forced to leave and enroll their children elsewhere. Of all schools affected, Malibu High took the hardest hit, with their school count dropping 13%. Over the Hill, public schools in Calabasas will be getting a boost from the city. The city is granting a quarter of a million dollars to parent-teacher groups at the schools. The two middle schools in the city will each receive $38,000. The three elementary schools will each get $32,000 and Calabasas High is getting $78,000. The city council is expected to authorize the grants at tomorrow night's meeting. Malibu's newest council members are now the city's top leaders. Karen Ferrer was sworn in as the city's new mayor last night. She previously served as mayor pro tem on the council for Jefferson Zuma J. Wagner. Ferrer says she will continue to carry out the city's top three priorities, public safety, Woolsey fire recovery, and school district separation. When I moved to Malibu over 40 years ago, I could not have imagined holding the title of mayor one day, but that day is here. I promise to continue to listen to all of you and to work on solving the issues that we face as a city and a community. Mikey Pearson is the new mayor pro tem. Both Fair and Pearson were elected to the council last November, just two days before the Woolsey fire broke out in Malibu. Commuters, beware. Topanga Canyon is under construction this week. Starting at 11.30 p.m., overnight Topanga will be closed from PCH to Grandview Drive through Thursday. Only one lane of the canyon will be open between Mulholland Drive and PCH on Friday and Saturday from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. The road closures are for crews to repair Topanga's pavement and slope embankments. Meanwhile, a new report shows efforts to make Malibu roads safer are working. News 32 reporter Jenna Gartner joins us live from PCH with the details. Jenna? Thank you. Yes, residents and tourists alike both know how busy PCH can get, especially during the summer beach months. But this year was a good year for Malibu, with traffic injuries reported to be down from last year. The Lost Hills Sheriff's Department presented their summer 2019 department update last night. The biggest announcement had to do with summer traffic. This summer was the first time in five years that the city of Malibu has had no traffic fatalities. So I think it really helped with the high visibility and just the extra enforcement out there and then partnering with the um, local businesses to be part of the solution. On top of this, the amount of non-injury collisions is down by 42% since last year, and the amount of non-injury collisions is down by 14%. Residents in the area have noticed these improvements. It's, it's always an uh, accident in a row, like, yeah, it's very tough uh, traffic on weekends. I live in Malibu, and uh, I drive here a lot, and I have noticed that it has seemed uh, a little calmer, so maybe that's why. This has always been a, a highway that I've been really scared to even be a pedestrian on, so that, that makes me feel really safe, yeah. <laughs> this progress seen in Malibu may have something to do with the summer traffic enforcement team that was put in place for the first time this summer. Malibu has been trying to make their roads safer, and this has been a good first step. 
In addition to the traffic report, the Sheriff's Department has this year's burglary statistics. The number of residential and commercial burglaries have gone down since last year. However, the number of parked car burglaries is about equal with last year's with still three months left in 2019. Sheriffs say be aware of potential theft and don't leave your keys on your tires. Burglars know that trick. Reporting for Newswaves 32, I'm Jenna Ray Gartner. Thank you, Jenna. Tents are up on Pepperdine's Alumni Park for the inauguration of the university's eighth president. Pepperdine's president, Jim Gash, will officially be sworn in tomorrow. The inaugura inauguration ceremony will bring thousands of people to the ca Malibu campus. Traffic will likely be backed up at Pepperdine's two entrances, John Tyler Drive off PCH and Seaver Drive off Malibu Canyon Road. The event starts at 10 in the morning. Charging ahead, the places local residents are pushing for more electric car plug-ins. We know it's one of the most disaster-prone roads around, but a new report signals big trouble for PCH. Mountain lions on the move, where officials say the big cats are moving after the Woolsey fire. And there's no reason to be blue about the coffee in Malibu. Find out how Blue Bottle, the newest coffee shop in town, differs from other options. Start a story. Adopt at theshelterpetproject.org. Adventure can be found anywhere, but the best place to start is in the forest. I spy something beginning with S. Snow? No. Snow-covered trees? Nothing to do with snow. Head outside to discover incredible animals <laughs> and beautiful plants that come together to create an unforgettable adventure. Wow. So grab your loved ones. Don't even. And explore a world of possibilities. Come on, this way. Visit discovertheforest.org to find the closest forest or park to you. Stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. Malibu locals doing their part in the world's largest volunteer day to protect the environment. Residents picked up trash and cleaned up Surfrider Beach, Malibu Lagoon, and Topanga Beach this Saturday as part of the annual Coastal Cleanup. The event is hosted by Heal the Bay as an annual tradition to clean oceans around the world. Over 13,000 people volunteered across LA County to remove around 60,000 pounds of trash and debris. That was last Saturday. Electric cars are rising in popularity and so is the demand for charging stations in Calabasas. The city is working to install two new electric charging stations at the city's tennis and swim center and at De Anza Park. Calabasas says current stations at City Hall and in Old Town are heavily used. Calabasas council members will vote tomorrow to approve the new stations. With waters on the rise, PCH could be MIA. A Caltrans report predicts that higher sea levels could put PCH underwater in 80 years. Areas including Trancus Creek Bridge and Malibu Pier could be in the most danger. Malibu has taken measures to protect certain areas of PCH in the past by putting large rocks on the beach next to the road. Caltrans is now using a new assessment process that considers solutions that are more resilient to climate change. 
New information to Newswaves 32 shows mountain lions are on the move post Woolsey. Park officials say last year's fire has forced at least two mountain lions to leave their homes in the Santa Monica Mountains. One female lion migrated north to Simi Hills after the fire. Mountain lion P61 moved toward the 405. P61 died earlier this month while crossing the freeway. Surveillance video shows P61 was trying to get away from an older mountain lion guarding his home. That is so scary. I can't even Very imagine. Sad. Meg here will tell us about the weather. Interesting <laughs> things going on. Yes. A lot of interesting things going on. At almost 515, it's still 79 degrees in Malibu. Temperatures are expected to be in the low 70s throughout the night. Humidity is at 51% and winds are traveling at 17 miles per hour, much lower than in any other valley or mountain area. Through the canyon, it's warmer. Calabasas is currently at 90 degrees. Agura Hills, 87 degrees. Thousand Oaks, 85 degrees. And it's currently 77 in Santa Monica. I checked in with our local fire station and today's fire threat in Malibu is high. It is expected to remain up over the next few days as long as Santa Ana winds persist. The ocean temperature is 71 degrees. Wave heights are expected to remain between two and three feet, making for a very consistent surf. As the tide rises at 630, conditions will become more swampy, so it's best not to wait. Let's take a look at our four day forecast. That's bringing a cool down and even a chance of rain. The high for tomorrow is 75 degrees and the low is 66. Thursday will be mostly sunny with a high of 73 and low of 64. Friday will be partly cloudy with a high of 70, a low of 62, wind speeds of 12 miles per hour, and a humidity level ranging from the mid to low 80s. Starting late Friday and leading into Saturday morning, there's a 30% chance of rain with temperatures ranging from the mid to low 60s. Wind speeds are projected to slow down over the next few days. I don't know about you guys, but I think I'm ready for some rain. I'm ready for rain. It's going to be chilly. We can go get some pumpkin spice lattes, go to Blue Absolutely. Bottle. So many options. Yes. <laughs> Love my coffee. Yes. <laughs> high quality, high prices. Malibu's newest coffee place is bringing both. Blue Bottle Coffee in the Whole Foods Center prides itself in brewing high quality, single origin coffee. Employees at Blue Bottle say they spend 30 minutes each day dialing in the coffee. But customers can expect to pay an average of $5 for each cup. For first timers, employees recommend the New Orleans style iced coffee, which is lightly sweetened. Splashing down. Two top 10 water polo teams hit the pool in the home opener for Pepperdine. Future, Future Olympians Unite. Go on a victory lap with the city's Malibu's cutest event, the Tiny Tot Olympics, in today's Around the Town Tuesday. Go on. Closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. What are you, superheroes? Just four brothers who hate bullies and love this city. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. Welcome back to News Waves. I'm Buddy Kennedy. And this is Around the Town Tuesdays, where I show you what's new in Malibu. 
Today we take a look back at the adorable athletes who came out this weekend for the annual Tiny Tot Olympics. Let the games begin. The Olympians of the future competed in the city of Malibu's Tiny Tots Olympics this past Sunday at Malibu Bluffs Park. Complete with an opening ceremonies and a torch run, except in this Olympics, everyone is a winner. It seems fun so far, and I like it because you get to play games that are cool, get free stuff, and you get to play with them, and it's fun. There were over 10 events, including football, soccer, gymnastics, bounce houses, as well as tennis taught by Pepperdine's own tennis coach. The event's goal was not only to provide a fun day, but to inspire kids' excitement for the real Olympics. Gets them excited about the real thing when they see it on television too, the torch run and also the, just the Olympics in general. This annual event by the City of Malibu's Parks and Services Department is not only fun for kids, but also good for local businesses. The hosts of the different games included local Malibu companies, which results in a rise in engagement and participation for them. Not only did many kids succeed in winning several prizes, but the Department of Services succeeded in their goal as well. The main reason that we host these events and programs is for community building. We used to be called the Parks and Rec Department, but we're the Community Services Department because we're really truly about bringing the community together and serving the community as a whole. The department is also looking for volunteers, so if you want to get involved with this event next year or events like it in the future, visit the Malibu City yeah, website. What a sweet idea. Those video clips were just so they precious. They were having <laughs> so much fun. Yeah, absolutely. There's one little girl who arrived at the same time I did. I was there for an hour, and she left. She did not leave the bounce house the entire time. Oh, I do not know how goodness. she had that much energy. Must but it must have been so tiring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, it was fun. Thank you so much, buddy. Mm -hmm. Exciting things as always here at Pepperdine with sports. Here's Austin. Yes, yeah, so first things first, Pepperdine Volleyball's regular season is off to a rocky start. On Friday, Pepperdine fell to the UC Santa Barbara Gauchos in the worst way, a reverse sweep. After winning the first two sets, the Waves narrowly lost the next three to UC Santa Barbara. Lindsay Ruddens was second in the nation in kill average last year, and she hammered 19 kills in the game. The Waves are currently ninth in WCC standings. A thrilling match between two Southern California powerhouses. Newswave's 32 reporter Juliana Berlin has more on Pepperdine Water Polo's home opener. A close game for Pepperdine men's water polo. The Waves fought hard against UCLA this weekend, but fell to the number two team in the nation, 14-12. Pepperdine started strong with a 5-2 lead, but failed to come back after UCLA scored five in a row before halftime. You know, we kind of let up a little bit, but I mean, I know if we just played with that same intensity and that same aggression we did in that first quarter, you know, I'm very, very confident we can beat any team out there. One memorable play from Pepperdine was when goalie Ken Emden blocked UCLA's offensive charge. What I was thinking about was getting the ball down the pool uh, and looking for the open passers. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously it was, it was a good block, it was cramped good to get like, momentum shifted a little bit. This was the Waves' third loss of the season, bringing their record to 9-3. <laughs> this strong start has made the Waves hopeful for the rest of the season. I think the guys really know that that's a team we can beat, and we just got to keep working. I mean, I think, um, I think that we should all be encouraged by where we're at and uh, where we're going this year. Water polo will be on the road the next three weeks, but will be back in Malibu with their next home game on October 19th against USC. For Newswaves 32, I'm Juliana Berlin. Close game. How do you think the team's feeling going into the rest of their season? I think they're in a good spot. You know, yeah. anytime your head coach is a former Olympian, like head coach Terry Schroeder, I mean, he was captain of the USA team for over 10 years. So with the schedule remaining, I really think water polo is in a good spot. Yes. That's amazing. Yeah. It's such a fun sport to watch. Too. Oh my gosh, yeah. The high scoring, I was it was really entertaining. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> okay, well, free to shop. Go inside one of Malibu's newest clothing stores, Free People, and see what you can only buy there. Reflecting on the Woolsey Fire, how, Ma how Malibu is using art to bring the community together. Not throwing away their shot. 
The big announcement about the number one Broadway musical. I thought the conversation just got dumber. Ugh, internet trolls, just ignore them. I like you just the way you are. I believe in you. She's a hugger. Give her a squeeze. <laughs> Help up the hand. Ah, there you go. Thanks, mate. You're killing it, Jane! There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly Lights out. Good night. and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. <gasps> Staring contest! You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Uh, Hart, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. The pressure is too much. I quit. I get it. I can do better. Just please, don't leave. Don't let your heart quit on you. Get your uncontrolled high blood pressure to a healthy range before it's too late. Well, a new clothing store in Malibu is trying to entice shoppers to not shop at the mall. The new Free People store in Malibu is one of the few standalone shops the brand has. The store offers items that can't be found anywhere else. The store is located next to Urban Outfitters on Cross Creek Road and is open every day from 11 to 7 p.m. Love shopping. That's the only Absolutely. entertainment I ever need. <laughs> I love to shop too. I'm so excited to go there. <laughs> Me yes. too. But tonight, a very big premiere for Pepperdine as the theater department rolls out on their first play of the year. Newswave's 32 reporter Kat Bigelow is outside the Lyndhurst Theater with details on the show. Kat? Thanks, Hallie. After months of preparation, it looks like the cast of Pepperdine's first production of the semester is finally ready to take the stage. Pepperdine's first show of the school year is premiering tonight at the Lyndhurst Theater. Future Proof, written by Linda Radley, is a lively drama that takes place in a circus. People don't want to see us anymore. People are not interested in who we are. And our ringmaster wants us to change because he thinks that that will draw in a bigger crowd. The show revolves around a series of colorful characters, conjoined twins, a bearded countess, and a money-hungry ringmaster, all of whom reside in a dying freak show. Once you really get to know the characters at the core, you realize that it, they're human. The play is directed by Pepperdine faculty member Kathy Thomas Grant, and it is the first show of a season of plays all based around the Pepperdine Theatre Department's theme, An Invitation to Change. I believe it displays in a very colorful and fantastical way just how drastically change can affect uh, a multitude of different people. Future Proof opens tonight and runs until September 28th, with shows starting at 7.30 and ending at 9.30. Tickets are available online and at the box office in the Smothers Theater. Hope to see you there. Back to you, Hallie. Your shot to see Hamilton the Musical. Hamilton is coming back to LA Hamilton Theater this March, and it will run until next September. Tickets go on sale to the public on November 18th at 8 a.m. There will also be a lottery for all performances for some $10 orchestra seats. Radical Beauty Malibu Rising makes a second appearance in this Malibu art exhibit almost a year after Woolsey. But this time, hope and regrowth are replacing shock and madness, creating beauty out of destruction. Cultural Arts Commissioner Veronica Brady says that she created this space to ease the tension between the city and Malibu residents after Woolsey. She says it is a perfect example of what the city should be doing to bring the community together. 
Thank you, Hallie. Thank you. I know I'm going to be waiting on November 18th to get my Hamilton tickets. I've been yes. wanting to see it for a while. Yep, that'll do it for, the, for us tonight. So have a great night. We'll be back on Thursday.